Hello, uh, this is Juan Rivera. I'm the Samurai Librarian and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, my findings as I kind of uh, looked at uh, freedom of information and libraries uh, for my graduate class at Syracuse University. And our task was to read about uh, read about minors and the CIPA um, which is the Children's Internet uh, Protection Act uh, and to think about how that may uh, conflict or uh, and to think about um, you know how that may conflict or go with um, li library practices in schools and in uh, regular public libraries and now the the um, the federal government gives money to libraries and schools and in 2000 uh, according to the Children's Internet Protection Act I'm reading here from um, from this website here um, NCSL um, that in, in 2000 uh, Congress enacted the Congress enacted the Children's Internet Protection Act as part of the Consolidated Appropriations Act so basically uh, if any institution receives money from the federal government um, they need to put filtering uh, uh, devices on uh, on, on their uh, the um, internet access within those institutions um, we also read an article by um, Mary Ann Bell uh, do you want to want kids to be safe online and her um, her uh, thesis was that you, you really need to kind of loosen the filters in order to teach students to be responsible um, uh, users of the the internet um, so that you can teach them responsibility um, on the other hand uh, uh, it kind of backing that up is the Library Bill of Rights, which, which says that, uh, which is stated by the American Library Association that books and other library sources should be provided for the interest, information, and enlightenment of all people of the community, and the li the library serves. Materials should not be excluded because of the origin, background, or views of those contributing to their creation. Um, for further guidance from the American Library Association is their page on minors and internet activity and just to give you a brief overview of that um, you know they really believe that having full full access for, for uh, minors to have uh, access to internet activity is really important as a First Amendment right um, and that any problems or any issues that arise from that is kind of a, a teaching situation that parents should monitor and you know teachers should teach about um, so you know I was reading about that but an interesting thing happened as I was reading about um, all this work as I often do uh, I kind of meander between websites you know when I need a little break as a reader I may look at my Facebook page um, I also like to follow Diane Ravish's page. Um, and while I was reading the Library Bill of Rights, I happened to stumble onto an article um, by a guest blogger that, that uh, she quoted extensively, Alan Singer, um, about visiting uh, a maximum security prison. And he found something interesting. Um, and I'll read to you here. The Federal Bureau of Prisons currently has a program known as the Trust Fund Limited Innate Computer that allows prisoners in the federal system to access email and facilitates online education. However, nearly all states prohibit internet use by inmates. Limiting access to technology severely blocks educational opportunity. According to the 2013 Handbook for Families and Friends of New York State, uh, DOCCS offenders, prisoners in New York State correctional institutions do not have access either to email or the internet, which locks them to, um, out of online college classes. Um, so a lot of interesting issues were raised by the readings, um, but I just found it interesting that, you know, while I was meandering from the page, um, 
I found this information about access to information for prisoners. Um, the latest ALA uh, magazine that I just received, I don't have the title on me, I'm at a different space, um, actually has uh, an article that I've yet to read on connecting prisoners and their children uh, via books um, and, and reading. Um, so, so this whole interesting issue of children and, and the prison population and so on. Um, but getting back to the readings that we had this week, um, you know, as a teacher, I find it, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn uh, because in some ways I appreciate the filters uh, because otherwise it's a lot of policing that you have to do uh, within the classroom um, as students try to focus on their work. On the other hand, a lot of tools are, are blocked um, and it just, you know, it, it, it would be so easy sometimes just to go to a YouTube video that covers uh, something as, as, you know, as benign as, you know, doing a good text, text to text video, uh, text to text reading or um, close reading or something very vanilla like that. On the other hand, um, the fact that students don't have access to YouTube means that, uh, you know, you don't watch them, you know, they're not watching fights or starting fights or doing internet bullying. Um, you know, the ALA, uh, ALA's position is that, you know, there's the First Amendment and access and, um, you know, the, the right of speech and so, you know, it's just saying that um, prohibiting children and young adults from using social networking sites does not teach safe behavior and leaves youth without the necessary knowledge and skills to protect their privacy or engage in responsible speech. Instead of restricting or denying access to the Internet, librarians and teachers should educate minors to participate responsibly, ethically, and safely. Um, I totally get that position, and I'm glad that this is the ALA's position on uh, privacy and internet use. Um, but I think sometimes with uh, time factors, uh, personnel factors, uh, that some filtering might be useful um, until you know the staff can uh, really come come together with a cohesive. Uh, curriculum to teach uh, our students how to use uh, the internet safely. Uh, I apologize for all my us. I'm becoming more cognizant of that. Uh, but think, you know, it's interesting that all these connections, you know, the, the prisoners, children, and internet uh, access information is something I'd like to look at further. And I'm definitely looking forward to reading that ALA article on the prison and children children's literature connection uh, okay thank you so much for your patience if you listen to this and in, enjoy bye bye